Hi everybody, it's Claire. This is going to be a short tutorial on watercolour pencils. Quite a few of you have been asking me how I use them and what techniques I use with them. The piece you can see in front of you is from Joanna Basford's beautiful Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. The actual design is coloured in Prismacolor pencils and the background is pastel pencils but I, this is the piece that I want to replicate some watercolours with in my spare book. So we're going to have a quick look at how to replicate these kind of colours so on the primroses themselves and on the primrose leaves and maybe an ivy at the end just to show you how you can replicate those with, with watercolour pencils. So if I just put my book carefully out the way and you'll see my spare copy of ivy ready underneath. Now what I have is, um, I, I do have the Faber-Castell, and it's going to be backwards on there for you in the video, but it's the Faber-Castell 120 watercolour pencils. These are what I've used mostly in the past. However, I do have a set of Prismacolor watercolour pencils, and that's what I'm going to be using today. And the reason that I'm using them is because there are only 36 colours in this box. So it's proving a point. You don't need a massive um, top of the range uh, branded box of watercolour pencils to be able to enjoy colouring uh, Joanna's books with watercolour pencils. By the very nature of them, they mix colour. So you will be able to create a wide variation of colour and shading with even a smaller amount of pencil. So if you've only got um, one of the smaller ranges of pencils, it's absolutely fine. They will do the job just as well for you. So what we're going to do is, and I'm just going to make sure that you can see the area of the page that we're working on, because we're going to be kind of looking down here. I'm just going to move that up slightly. I'm going to be looking here. Um, I've got, in terms of my paintbrush, I've just got a 3-0 fine tip paintbrush. It's not any particular brand. Um, it doesn't have to be a sable tip. It just has to be so that you've got a very fine um, hair on the end. So, so you can get into detailed areas. Now, these brushes you can actually just get them um, online as uh, modelling paint brushes. So a lot of people use them for painting model aeroplanes and model and toy cars and things like that. So they come in a variety of sizes and I'm just going to grab a couple of my other ones to show you. So this one is a 5-0 and you can see it's an even finer tip than the 3-0. Now these go down to 10-0 which is absolutely minute for um, very very small detail. And then they go up in size, gradually, gradually. Um, so you can see this is a size one, so it's got a, a thicker end with the, the brush hairs. And obviously the these go up two, four, six, eight, you know, till you get to the really, really big artist's brushes. But just in terms of size, I'm going to be using my 3-0 because I can get into quite a lot of detail with it. And because Joanna's books aren't watercolour paper, we don't want to be picking up too much water on the tip of this brush. Um, what I'm going to show you today is a technique where you're using very, very little amounts of water and therefore you will get absolutely no bleed through and no rippling of the page effect because we'll be using so little water, you'll be absolutely fine. But again, that's one of the reasons why I'm using a small brush because by virtue of the fact that it's got such a fine tip, it will prevent us picking up too much water. So I'm just going to start with one of the actual primrose petals. Now there's two main techniques that I use with watercolour pencil. One is to lay the colour down on the page first and then activate the colour with water. And the other is to simply um, wet your brush and rush, rub it over the tip of the pencil and paint directly onto the paper. So I'm going to show you both today. But we're going to start by um, using the technique where you put the pencil down first and then activate the colour. So I've got three Prismacolor watercolour pencils. So I've got an orange, which is um, Spanish orange. I've got a yellow, which is canary yellow. And I've got cream. And all I'm going to do is, so if we start on this big leaf here, let's move that up slightly for you. And we don't have to worry about blending because the water is going to do that for us. So about a third of the way up, just in a medium firm 
pressure. I'm just going to lay down some of this cream colour, like that. Then I'm going to go to my canary yellow and do exactly the same. And I'm going to go over the cream a little bit, but again, don't worry about blending because when we activate the colour with the water, it'll do it for us. And then just at the tip of these petals, I'm going to warm them up a little bit with this Spanish orange, like that. So then I'm going to take my paintbrush. I've got myself just a very, very simple egg cup full of water. I'm just going to get myself a little tiny bit of water on the tip. So all I'm doing really is I'm not dousing the, the paintbrush totally in the water. I'm just wetting the end because you don't need very much. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the water from light to dark. So I'm going to pull in this direction. I'm going to pull the light into the dark shades because if I pulled it the other way, the orange would completely obliterate the yellow and the cream. So all we're going to do is very simply work our way out over. And as you can see, I've got very, very little water on the page, so it's not going to bleed and it's not going to ripple. I'm just going to clean my brush off, dip it in again and pull this yellow into the orange. And you can see that just by adding that little drop of water, it activates that colour for you and it's, um, it's blended. Let me zoom in a little bit and I'll zoom out again. So you can see there that it's just by activating the colour, it's blended that out for us. Just pull you back up a little bit. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do this leaf here. So I've got some greens out. And what I'm going to do is lay down the colour first again in this instance. So I've got three greens. I've got dark green, I have uh, grass green and I have spring green. So I'm going to work on this leaf here. And in the same way that you would use a coloured pencil, a normal coloured pencil, think about light and shade. So we're going to lay down colour in the darkest shade where the least light, light would hit this object. So clearly, where it's sitting behind something, you would get a little shadow. And all I'm doing is in a medium firm pressure, just scumbling in, so little circles, just a line of shadow, like that. And then what you would find is with these little creases of the leaves, think about it in 3D, there'd be less light in the creases here. So we're just going to lay down some of this colour and it doesn't have to be neat because again the colour is going to activate it. So I'm just going to lay down some of the, that dark colour in there. like that and then along this crease line as well. Then I'm going to take my mid green which is my grass green and I'm just going to again thinking about the light so further down towards where it's sitting behind that flower would be darker. I'm just going to follow up those veins like that. Medium firm pressure just scumbling it in not worried about blending Like that. Then I'm going to go to my lightest green, which is my spring green, <clears throat> and just quickly fill in where the highlights of that leaf would be in that lightest colour. And then we go back to our paintbrush. And again, what I'm going to do is pull the colour from light into the dark. So you can already see that looks pretty okay but we're going to activate that colour up so again just a tiny bit of water on the end of that brush and I'm going to be careful with my brush strokes so working from top to bottom I'm going to pull that water from the spring green through the grass green I'm just going to clean my brush 
through the glass green and into that dark green. So you can see again that activating that colour blends it out for us. Clean the brush, pull down. And each time you hit a bit of the dark paint, so each time you finish one little segment, clean your brush because otherwise you're going to have dark paint on the end of that brush when you go to the next segment down. Pull it down, pull it down. So you can see I've got exactly the same colour tones and blending of those colours as I had on the leaf that I did in Prismacolor, just normal Prismacolor pencils. And it's actually quite fun, it's actually quite relaxing because it's, it's nice to do in a different technique from time to time. So doing watercolours can sometimes be a nice change from your, just your coloured pencils. Just pull it down. And you can see that because I'm using very little water, it's just not going to go through or ripple that page. There we go. And if you wanted to do some more layering up, just leave that to dry for a few seconds, maybe about 30 seconds, till the uh, because you're using so little water it'll dry very quickly. And then if you wanted to go back and do some of the deeper highlights again um, in the creases of the leaves. You can just wait till that dries and repeat the process with your dark green. So just, you know, go over it again and then reactivate the water. Now the other technique with watercolour pencils is to um, wet the tip and paint directly onto the page. So, just going to quickly clean my brush. And I'm going to be working on this leaf here so I need to pull that down a wee bit for you so can you see that now yes I think you can so again I've got my egg cup full of water and this time what I'm going to do is wet the tip of my brush and then wipe it over the color the colored tip of the pencil I'm going to do that quite a few times because I want that tip of the brush to be saturated with that colour. And if you need to add a tiny, tiny bit more water, do so. All you're after is having that brush tip completely coated in that colour. And then you just paint straight onto the paper. So I'm actually going to add a little bit more water to that. And then you just paint, and this is why I'm using such a fine brush, because you can see the shape of these leaves, the ivy leaves in the corners, are quite tiny. Which is why, if you use a detailed brush, it helps you do the job. And make sure that you don't get a bunch load of water on that brush. So I'm just going to quickly finish off this ivy leaf, bear with me, because then I'll show you how we can just add in. Using this technique it's easier to add in details over the top because the tip of the brush that you're using is finer than the point of your pencil. So I'm just going to lay down this base colour. And you can go over it, because you're using so little water, you can go over it, you know, once or twice to make sure that you've got an even coat of colour without worrying about warping that page. Because as you can see, I'm adding tiny bits of water at a time. And if you were using a colouring book that was proper watercolour paper, you wouldn't have to worry so much about this. But because Joanna's books aren't watercolour paper, we just need to be that little bit careful. But as I say, you're using so little you'll be fine. Okay, so we've got colour on that leaf now. I'm going to clean my brush. Then I've got a... Um, oh, sorry, so I should have told you the colour that I was using there. I was using True Green. So now I've got Parrot Green and I've cleaned my brush. And again, 
I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna activate that colour on the tip of the pencil with my brush. And I'm just gonna hold it away from the page just in case there's any drips come off. To be honest, we're using so little water, it's very unlikely to drip, but just in case you get any splash and you don't want it on your page, so I'm just gonna take it away slightly. Now, because you've got the paint on your brush, you can then play it to your heart's content, making yourself little veins on the ivy leaf. And you wouldn't be able to do that unless you had a very, very sharp tip to your pencil. But it's actually quite fun just to have a little bit of a freehand paint. As you can see. So you can see it's not rocket science and um, it doesn't, I don't think it takes all that much getting used to in terms of what you would use it for for colouring books. Clearly watercolour artists, true watercolour artists do some very very complex work. This is really just aimed at showing you how to use the, the basics in your, in your colouring book. So this is by no means a tutorial for experts, it really is aimed at people who are just wanting to try watercolour pencils out and hopefully that's given you kind of some, some basic tri tips and tricks on how to do that. Again, if you've got any questions, um, by all means drop me a line on the YouTube channel. Um, you can also get me on Facebook. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.